Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Chris Weidenbar, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Air Force is Squadron Leader Stacey Davids. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by visitors to the memorial and by students on behalf of the following schools. From New South Wales, Beaumont Hills Public School and from Western Australia, Keenan College, Manjimup. I now ask all who are able to please stand and join in singing the national anthem. Thank you. Students and anyone else requiring a seat, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this National Memorial Museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway lands. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they love, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today we remember and pay tribute to Private Joseph Thomas Earp. Joseph Earp was born on the 11th of June, 1917, the eldest son of Thomas and Edith Earp of Sydney, New South Wales. Earp grew up in the inner city suburb of Darlinghurst and later worked as a solderer. On the 3rd of November, 1939, not long after the beginning of the Second World War, Earp enlisted to join the Australian Imperial Force. He soon began training with the 2nd 1st Infantry Battalion at the camp at Ingleburn in Sydney's southwest. After just over one month's training, Earp sailed with his unit in the first convoy of Australian troops sent for service abroad in the war. He arrived in Kantara on the Suez Canal in Egypt in February 1940. Earp and the 2nd 1st Battalion spent the next eight months training and adjusting to the desert conditions at the Australian camp at Julis near Gaza in Palestine. In April, Earp received a severe injury to his knee, possibly the result of a training accident in which a truck carrying troops of his battalion drove into a ditch and turned over. His injuries did not keep him out of his unit for long, and in September, he moved with the rest of his battalion from Palestine to the Allied base at Ikingi Mariut near Alexandria in Egypt. They were moving west in preparation to join the fighting against fascist Italian forces who had declared war in June 1940 and attacked British positions in Egypt later that year. In mid-October 1940, Earp and the 2nd 1st Battalion moved to the base at Amiria, also near Alexandria. While at this base, the men of the 2nd 1st had their first taste of warfare when they came under attack during an Ita Italian air raid. In December, Earp and his battalion moved west in preparation for a major attack on Bardia, a well-defended Italian-occupied port in Libya near the border with Egypt. The attack began in the early hours of the 3rd of January, 1941, when Australian troops of the 16th Brigade, supported by British artillery, tanks, and aircraft, attacked Italian barbed wire and concrete strongpoint defenses. The Australian troops successfully breached the Italian defensive perimeter and by the 5th of January successfully took Bardia. In this battle, Allied forces took over 40,000 Italian prisoners of war in three days fighting at the cost of 130 Australian soldiers killed. Earp was one of the Australians killed in the attack. He fell on the 3rd of January, the first day of the battle, probably killed by Italian rifle or machine gun fire from a concrete strong point. He was 23 years old. He is buried in the Halfaya Solemn War Cemetery in Egypt, where over 2,000 Commonwealth soldiers of the Second World War now lie. His gravestone reads, For King and Country. His name is listed on the Roll of Honor on my left, among almost 40,000 Australians who died while serving in the Second World War. An image of his headstone is displayed today beside the pool of reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here 
at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Joseph Thomas Earp, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a very good evening.